Five assist. Five ships here at the meetup. Everybody's pretty quiet. Uh, I'm on way a good point. It says 220. Need to know what Sclam parks every time to buy one good crystal.
Loud and clear. Awesome. I am logging on now. I might need someone to give me an instance. If anyone's at uh, six or was it five? anyone think they can uh, wing invite me? I got like eight people on my list right now. I think someone just did actually. Thank you, Comet Born. Who just blew up? A lot of explosions. I blew up my SRB. Oh, somebody just lost an SRB. Fuck. It was behind <laughs> me. I see a fighter trail. Should I go back and get another one? I mean, uh -huh. our destination is only 500 light years, so. You got a whole week to go 500 light years. 
you could go all the way back and come back in like maybe even less than a day. I got another SRV though. <laughs> well, we're, we're skipping the next waypoint. <laughs> no, because it's so close, we are going to waypoint 6 in a group and then going traveling to waypoint 7. So that's what I heard. Well, waypoint 6 is next weekend, so we want to be in this area next Saturday. I'm probably just going to go there, but I'm going to explore and left, right, up, down, stuff like that, and then show up. Yeah, if you've got a I might just go through here. I don't see the point of going away from 7 to This is quite the pretty little move we're on. Getting dark here now. Where are we at? See the nebula better. I wish there was a way to turn off that HDR shit. Not being smart right now. King my gal map while cruising towards the planet. I'm kind of curious as to what you guys think about the new Crime and Punishment updates. I don't do crime, so it probably doesn't affect me much. I think what it, it don't really only affects people who kill other ships. Yeah, that's the idea. I think they're going forward with it. The only crime I ever do is a little smuggling now and then. Same. But like for griefing, what do you think it's going to do? A lot of people are saying it's actually going to make griefing worse, and some people are saying it's making it better, and I'm like super confused. It's going to make it more expensive, but it's not going to stop the griefers who have a lot of money. Yeah, True. it's not Concord, if anybody gets that reference. I don't think I do. I wish I did, though. In even line, Concord is the uh, inter is the general police force that goes all, all across oh, okay. the empires and they have ships that are basically unkillable oh kind of like uh atr yes but these yeah. ships are literally oh they're literally unkillable okay yeah they have an infinite <laughs> amount of health fuck <laughs> i almost played eve once but then i heard about its community and that's why i chose elite dangerous instead and i'm i played sort of glad. online for eight years and I Jeez. because no longer did I have the time to put it in daily. So what about Elite? Is it any different? Besides the cancer? <laughs> it's, diff it's different, yeah. It's what I... Uh, but there are things about Eve that I miss, especially setting up your own outposts and mining yeah. facilities. Like, a lot of the Elite's galaxy is quote-unquote empty for yeah, and that's true. There's also an entirely lack of interactivity between the players because we only have one inventory on our ships. Yep. Uh, we can't, you can't trade. Really store it. Yeah, you can't store it. You can't trade between other players except for dumping it out in space. Yeah, it's kind of boring compared to Eve Online. Like, there's not much point in in certain game mechanics I see because you, you can't expand upon them. This is how I land my anaconda. That's landing to me. <laughs> also, mining is a lot more easier in EVE. Yeah, mining in Elite's, uh, I think, uh, like, they kind of just slapped the mechanic in just so they could say that there's mining in the game. It's not really refined at all, I don't think. No, like, what I did in EVE Online, I ran four accounts altogether manually mining fleet and I made 2 billion isk, that's the currency in EVE Online, per month, which was enough at okay. the time. But in Elite, you refine on board your ship 
which requires a module. If, yeah. If we, could, if we could sell the raw ore or at the stations, that would increase the profitability of mining. Like, it, even if you could sell them for less than, like, it, let's say, an ingot, it would be really nice, but you can't because you need a refinery on board. I find that kind of annoying. Yeah. As well. Plus, then you need a collect, you need collected limpet as well, so that's another module that you're losing. Yeah. And because there are no dedicated, in Evil Online, there's like half a dozen dedicated mining vessels that have that get bonuses for mining, that have cargo space specifically for ores. In Elite, we all have general ships and we all outfit them with different modules, but there are no really dedicated ships except for combat ships. Yep, I agree. Like, even the, the DBX is still technically a combat ship. That's why I'm hoping that like to get maybe a larger version of the ASP. Maybe an uh, ASP Explorer large yep. would be handy. Just like same design as the ASP Explorer, but then large landing pads. Yeah, and maybe some like, you know, just small modifications, kind of like the T10 versus the T9. Yeah, like maybe have a, have a better jump range, maybe have some um, kind of like the entire idea that I read a few months ago about um, having an onboard laboratory and where you had to launch things, probes into atmospheres and such. That would be cool. Yeah, that would, that would increase the exploration mechanic a bit more than what we have now. Yeah. That would be awesome. Like exploring is, in Elite is like, I mean, we can say it, it's interesting but, but it's still very lackluster we have all the visuals but not the me not really any mechanics that make it worthwhile other yeah, than the visuals because we're human um all it's going to take let's say that the elite runs for the next century mm -hmm. it, oh yeah it would, you know, it would be impossible to really explore, explore everything. every single system <laughs> that every single planet discovered but the problem is now all of the good stuff is getting taken really, really fast because people are cherry picking that. Oh yeah. So we need yeah. a mechanic in the future to keep people interested in exploration if they just started. Yep, I agree. And getting them unique things like uh, investigating anomalies, investigating atmospheres, investigating things, research things that we can learn yeah. from different worlds. That would be. And and how life harboring planets like gas giants with life or Earth like worlds, for example, water worlds, the only really research you can do on them is simply scanning them with the DSS. And I find that really stupid. Yeah. There and should be a lot more. In extreme form, what I would love to see, but it's practically impossible, I think, is maybe allow us to set uh, kind of our own bases on planets. Or that would be neat. In deeps. I just can't imagine how they would implement it. Yeah. But then again, we either need, or at least give us station inventory. Yeah, well, they said they were adding, uh, like, mega ships for factions. Yeah, I know that uh, Cannon has one. Cannon has one, okay. But, like, I, I th it was fleet carriers, I think they were talking about. Yeah, the, yeah, the Cannon one is not player controlled. Yeah, I, oh. the player controlled ones. Like, I, I imagine they're not player flown, but you, like, let's say a player faction leader can control which system it jumps to. Maybe there's a time penalty. And you can, like, use it to stock up and. I see it kind of like a guild bank kind of thing. Maybe they'll give us yeah. uh, storage there for cargo I see it like, and materials. Yeah. I see it like that and as, a, let's say, like a conflict zone, you know, when a, like a carrier jumps in. Not a carrier, but a. Like capital, capital, capital ship. ship. Like, because I'm primarily used to be a miner for eight years in mining asteroids in, uh, in EVE Online, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of pristine reserves in deep space, which are literally untapped. Yeah. Like, if you can get, could get a, a, a mining fleet with, with a carrier and the people would prop off their mining there, and that then when it returned to the bubble of or whatever where humanity lives then that would make mining a more viable option yeah. as well. They said they were gonna revamp mining though. By teasing a, a cobra blowing up an asteroid, I guess. I mean if that was the only thing they were doing then whatever. But like 
Yeah, sometime yeah. by the end of the year, hopefully. Yeah, when the crate we'll comes have, out. Uh, guilds, what did they call them? Squadrons? Yep. Squadronius. So you can actually have a real in-game faction that you can actually join instead of just pretending to join. Like Inara. Yeah. This week has been a lot of wolf raids and carbon stars for me. Three wolf raids explored for unexplored, five carbon stars unexplored. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> Someone just flew by me in a... Astronaut. Hey guys, anyone at waypoint five? Lots of us. Any chance of a wing? It's gazatronic. Brill cheers.
back, so I'm gonna ring my doorbell. Everybody's quiet. I'm not seeing any SRVs about. I'm. I just got into an SRV, so I'll be there soon. Even Dan's isn't uh, trying to Are drill you? into the crust. Yeah, the, the, for the first time, I'm not trying to do that. But I'm here. I'm in an SRV. Fifty-one percent. Wow, that was quick. Rough roads made it back from Goliath's rest. It's, uh... No shields on your SRV.
Oh my god. No! Oh my god, that was really close. Out of control spin? Yeah, but if someone can select my SRV, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> I'm just inching along now. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna slowly inch back to my ship. True, but I don't want to really spend them unless I need to. Just that's the first time I've been at 1% for a while. I really just find it funny, well, as realistic as this game is, you can have 1% hull and gently nudge a rock and still just explode. Just, you know, explode. <laughs> yes, because that 1% could mean, like, you know, like one milligram of hull left or a full kilo of hull left. I see what you mean. Oh my god, I see people approaching. I'm going in on a ship. Stay away. <laughs> I'll be right back. Somebody landed on the T-10. Oh, trying to. Oh, nice. It's like the asps are all sticking together. Try and land on the C10. What was one percent hull? <laughs> no, now I'm at hundred. I redocked. I mean, it's worth a try too. So redocking your SRB repairs it, does it? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, we should have the redocked. I've been wasting all my mats repairing my SLV. <laughs> uh, the other good thing about it is if you use a premium repair, when you dock and the ship repairs your SRV, you don't lose that premium boost. Oh, great. Yeah, that's useful. But if you repair it yourself with the basic, then you do. Okay, how did my hold... Wait a second. I landed with my SRV after just jumping normally. Is there any such thing as integrity on an SRV? That might have been a glitch. I'd landed on my, my wheels and I went from 100 to 14%. That actually makes no sense. Does anyone have an idea? <laughs> I'm so confused just right now. You landed on your wheels and went from 100% SRV hull to 14%? Yeah. You must have landed really hard or maybe you landed on a rock. I mean, I, I just used my boosters. So maybe I landed on a rock. That was probably it. Because I don't see how it got that low. I was landing my ship one time, and I was descending very slowly, one meter per second, steady rate, landing gear down. Nothing could have caused damage, but I just touched down and uh, lost all my shields. Because <laughs> I landed on a rock. Oh, okay. Fucking rocks. The first time I took my Anaconda out, when I was going to go engineer it, like I bought it and I fitted it with some modules because I don't have a, a 
Jameson Memorial yet. I had just took off the thing and an NPC Beluga spawned right in my instance and I flew off the pad and smashed into the wall of the station and took my hull down to 3%. The first time I ever flew my Anaconda. <laughs> took me a while to get the hang of going through the mail slot. I kept scraping the paint off. Yeah, same. It's like the opposite of flying a T7. Oh yeah, with the 7 you want to go in low, right? Yep. Because you got all that space above the cockpit. Mm -hmm. I see the Cobra's taking advantage of its small size and finding interesting landing spots. Because now I smashed into the T-10 and only have 88% huddle, so that makes more sense. I'm trying to get on top of it. The low gravity makes it easy to bounce off if you do get on top. Yeah. Oh, I'm just missing Almost it each made. time. <laughs> Gotta get a little higher. Yeah, I, my engines wouldn't go anymore. I'll try this again. Oh, I lost 2% hull while driving. Doesn't make sense. Probably wanted to start that jump a little oh, sooner. No, no. <laughs> yeah. 50%, 47%. Okay, this is a little weird how much... I'm just t tapping the ground. Well, this is the only SRV I've taken out. I haven't really cycled them. Maybe integrity is a real thing. I haven't seen any mention of integrity on an SRV, but you never know. I have no, I have no idea. Okay. But I always do a premium repair that way. I got more hull points. Yeah. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, there's a Type 6. Thirty-eight percent. I'm gonna try through the. F no, I have to try through the side. Wish isn't online yet. Isn't Wish hosting this? He should be online, but uh, he was on uh, Discord a few minutes ago, uh, posting some text. But he hasn't jumped into the voice chat. We're still ten minutes from the meet time, but. Usually we meet up early and take off about the meet time. Somebody's crashing into my SRV. All right, I got you on camera. Your approach looks good. You're going to come short. Ah. Ah. I want to dock and let your SRV repair. I like how all the asps are just chilling in one corner they tend to stick together i think they feel outnumbered by all the anacondas yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a poor old t6 i feel sorry for <laughs> yeah it looks so small <laughs> i wish i brought my dolphin i'll keep saying that through the end of the expedition i do like how it's getting dark on this moon right now yeah size doesn't matter that's how you'll use it. That's also an Elon Musk quote. I think he was talking about rockets. He was talking about rockets, but it was definitely... But then he makes the fucking heavy and size does matter. 
The yeah. BFR <laughs> is so named because it's big. I cannot it's wait for the BFR. <laughs> At the same time they launched the Falcon Happy, they, uh, Japan launched the smallest rocket ever. I saw that one, yeah. Really? The smallest uh, orbital rocket? Scott Manley posted a video on it. Okay. I'll they launched a satellite that. with the smallest possible rocket that could do it. That's cool. Yeah, and it's not for commercial purposes. It was just a... Um... CubeSat, right? Yeah, it was a CubeSat, and it was just to prove that it could work. Oh, that's cool. So it's nothing like the Falcon 1? It wasn't even a rocket. They launched it from a portable... It looked like a portable missile launcher. <laughs> it, it looked like one of those missiles that you launch from yeah. the missile carrier. Like a javelin? Yeah. Oh, Bigger cool. than that. Well, I'd hope so. <laughs> well, that's cool. Okay, that yeah, it looked like though. a tactical missile rather than an ICBM. It's got a different kind of engines where they use electric motors to pump the fuel. Oh, electric motors. Okay. Yeah. That's why they call the rocket the Electron. Oh, wait, the Electron rocket. I've heard of this. I look it on my phone. I wonder when Ariane 6 is going to be ready for the first launch. I saw them tease that, and I was like, oh. <laughs> they launched after New Guinea, usually, right? Yep, which is the... the French. But French it's, in, it's in the, the Amazon still. Yeah, it's French, Guinea, and... The launch site, Kuro, is the best launch site on the planet because it's on the equator. Yeah. I guess that's what they tried to get with uh, Cape Canaveral. Oops, someone hit my SRV. Oh, there's Cape, Cape Canaveral. Now, I get that a lot of these rockets have been in development for a long time, but it seems strange to me since uh, SpaceX has released all of their patents free to use, why are none of the governments actually exploring landing their rockets? Um, uh, well, you mean by none of the governments mainly being in America since they used to lead the space race? Or, or the well, America, the ESA getting... doesn't have any landable rockets. China, Japan, like you said, That's... nobody's experimenting with landable rockets yet, even though uh, all those patents are free to use. Because yeah, I find, until, I find it amazing. The Fal until the Falcon Heavy, there's two problems. Until the, Fal the Falcon Heavy is the first reusable rocket capable of sending payloads beyond the low Earth orbit. Yeah. And secondly, the engines that are used by Falcon, uh, by the Falcon series, are a former Soviet Union design. Really? The Berlin engines are Soviet? Yeah, and they have a limited amount of them. Oh, okay. But wait, I've, I've seen how they spin form so their SpaceX rockets. makes them. Yeah, they, they make them. They, they spin uh, form them in their... Like, the, okay. at their own factory. That's where they build so the whole thing. The original reason why they have to recover the rockets is because the original supply of this engine was Soviet-made, and they literally bought up the entire supply from uh, Ukraine. Because they were stored in a warehouse in Ukraine, and Ukraine wanted uh, to get rid of them, so SpaceX bought them. So they had a limited supply to begin with. Okay, so then they just sort of reverse engineered them and remade them then? Yeah. Because I know they. Yeah. Because okay. the, they've done some improvements to increase the thrust on them as well. Because the Soviet engines were far more efficient than the American ones. Yeah, the Soviets were very good at space exploration. Like, they're. Uh, I, I know that they're docking system for what is it, their airlocks were a lot more advanced and a lot better and sim simpler than the American ones, especially using the station even. Oh, well, Skylab was, was the main thing other than the Muir space station. It, when did that happen when they both docked? There was like a Soyuz and there was an Apollo service module that docked together? Seven, somewhere in the 70s, I believe. Oh. Yeah, I remember Skylab in the 70s when I was a kid. That was some amazing shit. Also, there are bullets currently in orbit. Bullets? Yes, the Soviets on their first series of space stations, um, one of them had a, a modified version of an anti-aircraft gun, gun that you could find on a World War II uh, air uh, bomber. 
Mm -hmm. and modified it to fire into space and they fired a couple of test bullets. Wow, so they're just like chilling in orbit? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I'm sure they're moving pretty fast, but probably not that much faster percentage-wise from the orbit itself. Yeah, still, still dangerous. Yeah, wasn't there something that happened on one of the space shuttles where orbiting the opposite way there was a chip of paint from an old satellite or an old space station yeah, that impacted how, the windshield? That's how Columbia got it. So. It was Columbia. I thought that happened during takeoff. I thought I thought there, the, oh, yeah. uh, it hit the uh, windscreen. Now, Columbia had some Columbia. ice come off the boosters. And, and then it the heat shield of the uh, orbit. There, are, there is on the cupola, on the on the International Space Station, there is a right. shiver of the shiver of the glass from the cupola gone because it hit the paint speck of a something. Okay, so it's a cupola, not uh, not a shuttle. Okay, I, I knew it was glass, but it was like it's all bulletproof glass, first of all, right? Like it has to be. Oh, micrometeorite proof. Yeah, but like still, like a piece of paint, and it still makes like what three centimeters deep of a hole. <laughs> Or a chip. Yeah, that's... Uh, Depending that's how thick it is, I don't know. What is. The cupola has holes in it anyway for the... Um, it has for the crank shield, levers it that they use to open and close the shields. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. And the problem is there's now so much space to start thinking about cleaning it up, or all will be permanently stuck down here. Yep, and that's why I love that Elon Musk, because I already thought of that with a BFR. <laughs> Yeah. Like being a multi-purpose spacecraft, like Problem even is one that, that because can of up space international trade. space treaties, nobody's allowed to clean up junk. That's so stupid. It's like not being well, allowed to Well, there's classified stuff cars. up there they don't want people to recover. All right. Um, the biggest thing that still, biggest objects that still come down now and then are the boosters of these Apollo series. Wait, they're still orbiting. There's yeah, several were... of those still orbiting, yeah. What the fuck? I thought those were suborbital and they burned up. Uh, the first oh. stage, yeah, but the second stage that had to put them into orbit, because uh, Saturn V had the first stage that put them in suborbital flight, the second stage put them into an orbital flight, and the third stage put them on a lunar intercept. Oh. Okay, so there there weren't any retro thrusters that, that moved the second stage. Wow. No, they they basically jetted to the second stage when the fuel was depleted and it wasn't like medium oh my. Uh, orbit. They didn't. And then they used that. the third stage. Then they went had enough philosophy on the last stage to get to lunar intercept. Then yeah, lunar insertion burn would have been nowhere near a orbit that would have come back. Yeah, that's true. Holy shit. So yeah, that that's and to, those would be on a highly elliptical orbit, wouldn't they? Yeah, they're yeah, on highly difficult orbit, which makes them unpredictable and less tracked, and that's why they can come down when by gravity affecting. Them. Imagine having a future spaceship just doing a routine mission. Oh, there's the Saturn V. Boom, you're all dead. <laughs> well, if we ever get to that point, I hope humanity becomes interplanetary and hopefully okay. interstellar. Just with politics nowadays, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, well, that's politics, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, like, that's what I, what I like about Elite Dangerous and the Federation. It's just, it makes it sensible for corporations to run everything. Because at yeah. least that's, because humanity seems to work well on that, and it seems to be the only control, as long as the company well, well, has a vision. Um, we talked about the evil line earlier. You should look up the Kaldari. How do you spell Google it right now? C A L. Wait, wait. I'll just see if I can find the YouTube video. All right. Okay. And who was talking again? Dan. I think it was me. Space engine. Online. Okay, 
look at Like in even line you have four empires. Well five, but the five one is not playable. You have the Amar, which are basically what would happen if you let the Christian Church go further with uh, crusades and crazy stuff. You have the Kaltari, which are basically Oh, we're going to let the corporations run amok. Run amok without regulation? Uh, regulations and every So, profit before... Profit before ah, all. I can see how that's a problem. Then you have the <laughs> Galente, which are a collection of minor factions and the only demo uh, democratic nation in EVE Online. Oh, EVE Online is really extensive then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Not really, oh, sorry. It, has, it only has 50,000 solar systems. Oh, but still, it's a lot. This uh, is funny. It... In the video you sent me, there is one comment um, with the reply, My favorite faction. And the name of the account is Adolf Hitler. And <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> <laughs> um, And then... And the lot, the, then you have the Minmatar, okay. which are basically referred to as even line players as the guys who is um, who tape their ships together. Oh, so they probably suck at combat if they tape them. Together. No, they're they're pretty good at combat, but their ships are all, look all like they come out, came out of the junkyard and were cobbled together because they're basically former slaves that revolted against the. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. I like the lore then. Yeah. And then you have the Jovian Empire, which is basically, oh, we are super technologically advanced and we kind of try to interfere with all the other empires just to keep us safe. So they're, in a way, they just, they're just a huge bunch of assholes that put their own advancements forward just as a uh, preventative so, measure? So, in the Eve Online universe, Eve is a reference to after we humanity expanded throughout our galaxy and couldn't get any further war started and that all stopped when they found a wormhole called eve which they called eve which led to the new eden cluster which is where Evil eden Line cluster. takes place that's cool and okay, so like they built idea. they built infrastructures to stabilize the, that wormhole and started colonizing that but guess what happened uh, it collapsed, or is some ward prevented? The wormhole collapsed before most of the colonies could get self-sufficient. Oops. So, okay. So humanity completely reverted to the Stone Age, had to rebuild. The Amarans were the first ones to be back in space, and they started conquering all races and because they, their gods said that they were, that everyone else was inferior to them. Ah, Dogma. I can always yeah. love Dogma. Um, the Kaldari Prime was an, a world that was was in terraformation process when Eve collapsed. So the planet was completely on the edge of habitability. So there, the Kaldari lived there. The Galenti lived Galenti Prime, which is in the same solar system as Kaldari. Uh, they had it well, and they developed the democratic republics and kingdoms and eventually with the Galenti Federation, which the Galdari were initially part of, but tensions grew between the two because the Galdari wanted wanted to do uh you well know, yeah, profit before all. They didn't they didn't like they didn't like the uh, regulations the Galenti had. So they went oh, independent. Shit. Which caused the war. Sounds like Texas. <laughs> and then the <laughs> uh the Minmatar they were one of the races enslaved by the Amar, and they had a tribal society, and they recently revolted against the Amar. So, and the Jovians in lore are the quote-unquote descendants of the sleeper ships of the technicians that were sent to New Eden to put all the infrastructure in place so that people could so, travel between solar systems. So they had a technology. Yeah. So they, cool. they were, and because they were in sleeper ships, they were completely unaffected by the collapse of the world. Oh, because, because they weren't really part of the economy, or yeah, the... they were just on their way to 
build new stargates to connect more systems to the entire cluster. That's cool. Uh oh, I gotta turn on my thrusters. Shit. 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 <laughs> oh, careful, careful, careful. I, I know, I'm trying. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Kind of stuff that causes accidents, man. Good that You're just sense. screwing around over there. Okay, I'm gonna move away. So, the war between the Galenti and the Kaldari ends with the Kaldari evacuating their home planet to, to a new Kaldari. And in order to distract the Galenti from this, a Admiral basically crashed a carrier on related cities on Galenti. Mm -hmm. A fighter carrier, which is a ship that's a kilometer long. Oh, that's fun. And this is is this remembered. So basically, the Galanti and the Kaldari can drink each other's blood. Drink each other's blood. Yeah, because they're still like arch enemies. And, and when I kind of quit playing, there was they um, they uh, were at war back at war with one another. There is actually a faction called the Blood Raiders, which is a split-off of the Amar, and their ships are literally the same as the Amar, except their hulls are painted over with blood of their victims. Oh, that's fun. And they want to slot their especially uh, hunt down capsuleers, which are commanders, because they believe the blood of cloned com of cloned of capsuleers is more pure. For their sacrifice to their god. Wow. So this this game really took forth like a possibility of what humanity could actually do if they became intergalactic or interstellar. Like a lot of different ideas would spread forth. And yeah, because beliefs. That's pretty uh, cool, actually. Between like between even between the Eve wormhole collapsing and the Eve, the current Eve Online game, there's 20, 21,000 years. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit more than Elite. And they, they know about memes? <laughs> Probably. They have no idea where they are, because it's not sure where the new Eden Star Cluster is. It's not, okay. It's, it's 50,000 solar systems orbiting a, a black hole. But it's not Shit. far. So they don't know anything further. And... Um, Capital ships are the only ships that can jump from one system to another, and all the rest have to use the stargates. Okay. And in order to connect a new system to the network, they had to send out sleeper ships, which took sometimes centuries to reach the next system, and then build a gate there, and then see if that gate works and return to the original place. So like generation ships in uh, the real world or elite? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Except also, with probably cryogenics, I assume. Yeah. There is a story. There is a system in in Eve Online that's called the Old Man Star, and that's named because in lore, the father of modern drone technology it was on board one of the sleeper ships, and there was a massive failure on board, and he basically spent 60 years of the journey awake. Oh, that's rough. And he developed uh, drone technology on board, and then actually, on his own, built the Stargate and returned. No. Oh. Well, I guess if you have all that time to yourself, you can probably figure it out, especially if you already know a little bit about it. And what I do about Eve, which I really miss in Elite Dangerous, each Empire has their own style of ships. But Elite Dangerous, okay, okay, I see what you mean. They don't exactly, it's just you only have those specific, uh, yeah, a lot of the ships in Elite look the same. I see what you mean. Either Lake on or Delacy. I just, wait, is that the same video? No, that's the Glenty. Okay. And you can see that how the Galanti in this video you can see a lot of Galanti ships. So the Kaldari ships are very uh, straight lines for efficiency, and the Galanti are are pretty much 
bulky and spherical ships. Oh, they're kind of like roundish too. Yeah. Oh, they remind me of. The... Uh... Oh. I was thinking Mass Effect for a second. They they kind of looked like Geth ships. Yeah. And then you have the Amar, which basically gold plate their ships. Oh, those look like yeah, cool looking. And in that you can see their Avatar class Titan. Because each nation has a titan, and the alliances can build their titans. What's a titan? A titan is a super capital ship that's capable. Like it can jump and stuff. It can jump. It has um, it has docking facilities. It has cloning facilities. It has a super weapon. Oh, so it's basically a whole planet, but like not really a planet, like a society. Uh, and uh, no, it's basically, um, it's basically the ultimate, it's, in Elite, you would call them the, uh, the battleships, or, uh, the capital ships that the Empire has, oh, okay, compared to us. The Titans are basically, oh, we built one. Thank you. Sweet. Yeah, um... The uh, story-wise, Even Line is brilliant. Community-wise, not so much. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of bad things about the community. It's hard to switch to watch these because my screen spaz out every time I leave. Okay, Mumatar Tribal. I like the idea of humanity expanding forward, like, we're always, I mean, when people say, like, world peace can be achieved, I, I don't think it can be. <laughs> but, like, yeah. we can expand and we can have peaceful areas, but uh, as long as there's other people, like, evolution's not on our side, that's all. Like, that's a different debate, though. Yeah, like... And when I was, a... the thing I was saving for was in Eve Online when I was playing it was for a Galanti mix. Wait, uh, wait, what? Sorry. A Galanti mix, which was a super carrier. Oh. Which is you. Basically, have a carrier which can carry 24 drones, fighters, and then you have a super carrier which can carry more of that and uh, bomber drones. How much more? Like thousands? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Of course, you can only deploy like six at drones at a time. Uh, you have to have the skills for it, but if your drones die, you, they don't get automatically repaired, you just have to send out the next one that you have. Like, but they can be they can be replenished at least? Yeah. Uh, that's also a difference between Elite and Eve Online. In Eve Online, every single ship you could, that you buy, every piece of equipment is made by the players. There's nothing that the 
AI factions actually give it. Wait, so it's completely player based? Yes. Oh, that's okay. I was wondering how the mechanic was different, and I knew it was cool in that aspect. That uh, okay, I see. So the okay. so the empires can uh, you can get uh, blueprints as as mission and uh, loyalty reports uh, rewards from the empires and to build stuff. But everything that you buy on the markets, every single ship, every single piece of equipment, except for the starter ships, which you get for free from the Empire, you have to buy. Wow. Okay. So, like, the ships that appear in-game, uh, are there NPCs? Or, I mean, there, there have to there be... There are NPCs. There is, um, the... You have the police forces, you have pirates, and, well, you have NPC police, NPC pirates, uh, NPC military, and that's basically, and yeah, that's basically it. You um, most of the pe most of the ships you will encounter are players. Okay, that's cool. Cause in Elite, it's much different. Like, <laughs> as we all know. So I, I guess it's fun in that aspect. But when you have uh, all those player factions, it must be like really central on, on a player faction at one point therefore like you have a group of players it's like yeah. they have these certain beliefs and it becomes cancerous at some point yeah. Meme in each just... line you have a you are part the smallest factions that you have are corporations so they have it whose members and who has a ceo uh corporations can join an alliance and okay. the alliances can control space because beyond the border of the empires, there's, and the empires are like maybe 10% of the entire even one universe. All the rest is like literally unclaimed by the NPC factions, which is the uh, alliances control the whole. So there are oh. massive wars fought daily over systems. That's awesome. Because in order to set to conquer a system you need to set up the right infrastructure and then you have to defend that infrastructure because the controlling faction can disrupt your efforts to take over hmm. and then when you and then when you have enough control over a system you can deploy an outpost in it which is a small little space station which is with a certain function it can be medical so for more clone for cheaper and more cloning facilities, can be a refinery which has more refining slots and more factory slots available. It can be a shipyard which allows you to build ships. And uh, what else? Yeah, that's there's a fourth one, research, I believe, which basically allows you to generate resource points to get uh, blueprints. Hmm. So how different is the mechanic of, like, the space aspect or the, well, yeah, the space aspect. Is it one-to-one -one like Gilead? No. Okay. Well, it's no, smaller. because it's more like you have super crews. Well, you have a type of super crews, and then you have the stargates that connect the systems. Uh, it's a lot smaller. Okay. Uh, the universe is also static. Last time I played none of the planets actually moved. Nothing moved. Oh, okay. Also, uh, player-wise, it's... Uh, you have a, a GUI, which in the middle has your shield, your hull... No, you have your shield, your armor, your hull, your power capacitor, and then you, the slots. To activate. It's not like in, the, uh, in Elite where you have to fly, excuse me, fly after something, you have to just have to target something and your weapons will automatically fire at it. Okay, I see what you mean. You actually have to like set them to target. Yeah. Okay, well that's cool at least. Elite kind of automates it with AI. So, and AI. there's also different, each faction also has different types of tanking mechanics, like the Mar. Uh, they armor tank, so they have a lot of, they focus a lot of keeping their armor up. The Kaldari 
have focus on shield tanking. So as soon as you even um, a Kaldari ship loses its shields, it's dead because its armor and hull are paper. Oh, okay. Speaking uh, of paper, paper. <laughs> if anyone just saw what I did. <laughs> uh, the Glenti are also armor tankers, so they focus a lot of their armor, but they they focus a lot on drone weapons. So they their ships have an, have more drone capacity than the other empires. Then again, you can only have like five to six drones out. Um, the Minmatar are basically can do both. Sorry, just a sec. I, I got my hull down to like nothing percent and I need oh. to repair it. Yeah, I was just rolling around the ground and I kind of smashed my hull and I just tapped the ground lightly and my hull went to 83% instantly. I'm a little bit worried if about landing in the future. <laughs> Oh, uh, whoever is sending the repair limpet, thank you. Yeah, I, I just happened to one, have one in my cargo bay. Ah, oh, they hit repair the ground. Oh, shit. Okay, let me go higher. I have my own repair limpets. Um, oh, I sent one to astronaut. Never. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to interject. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> now I've just been lurking for this entire conversation. Repair a little bit, task complete. Well, I'm thankful for that. <laughs> there we are. I'm now at 101% hold. <laughs> Fucking A. Okay, now I'm going to repair myself. I think I can synthesize a few. I think I've got a, sp a few spares if you need them. Well, I see this ass to my left that's just like... doing a nice bank. Thankfully, though... Hello, hello. Tap, tap. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good Thankfully, even though my hull just smashed to 83%, Ooh. every single one of my modules is still at 100%, and I don't understand why. That's weird. Yeah, like, okay, I lightly tapped the ground, so maybe that's it. Uh, <laughs> my uh, integrity is oh, probably at 0%, which would have done it. Like, I was just scraping across the ground, like, at less than a meter per second impact oh, range. Okay. And it went to 83% in, like, three seconds. So, but every single one of my modules is 100% right now, and I'm hoping it's not a glitch. Yeah, I'm at waypoint 6 waiting for you guys. Wait, are we all at 6? I think we're all at 5. Oh, we're at 5, okay. Five, yeah. Wait, I thought waypoint, waypoint 6 was next week. It is. <laughs> yeah. Left I, think first, I think the first group all traveled there together earlier today. I was part of that group, yeah. I'm I was too, I just decided to stay guys. back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fire another limpet. It took two minutes to repair myself 3%. This is going to take forever. <laughs> At least you can repair yourself. Yeah, that's true. If I was a dolphin, I would have been destroyed by now. I designed the ship to be anti-gank. I before I took it on the expedition, uh, it's made in voyage before an exploration voyage about one k out from the bubble. I went to a, a uh, community goal with a docking computer and beam lasers just because I knew I would get ganked, and I did it about three times, I think three or four times, and I managed to escape all three times without my shields even dropping. Or I think it dropped once, but it was insignificant, so like... I was just sort of worried that there would be gankers on this because it was such a large expedition at the time. And then you can compare it to Distant Worlds 2 right now, and it's like unprecedented. 
Yeah, what is it at three thousand dollars? Something, yeah, something insane like that. It doesn't even make sense. I love it. It looks like Wishbin is busy, so are we gonna no, stick I, around I, here for a while? I or just, I saw Wishbin say something in chat just now. Yeah. Get his attention. Who's gonna take? Just posted control. in in uh, Discord, wanting to know if we want to stay in chat or take off and do a group war. Yeah. I had a song in my head when I was coming back from uh, Goliath's Rest. I put it up in uh, images and videos to scroll up. Neutron Dance, 1983. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was kind of fitting. For some reason, my repair limp that I just launched failed, so I have to synthesize more. Uh, where is it? Synthesis. Everybody's done messing around. My stream looks like a still picture. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm being careful, considering I just like wasted my ship. I still don't understand how everything is at 100 percent right now. Except like, your hull, which is understandable. Well, yeah, which is understandable. But I'm surprised that none of the other modules were damaged, other than my hull. I think when you, you didn't hit it at a very high nothing speed. Got, nothing got damaged, just everything slid forward inside your hole, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I could do an experiment, but I don't want to damage anything. I'm really... As soon as I get, like, 99% power plant, I'm just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> even though I know it can go to 1%. And even everything turned on, I'm only using 60% power anyway. So I'm okay with it failing a few times. Yeah, mine's at 96%. My power. Not bad. You've been ramming into stars lately? Uh, a couple of exclusion zones, yeah. Okay. One oh no, my chaff launcher is down to 97. Uh, everybody, watch this system that I'm in right now because the black hole might uh, nail you. Oh, there's a black hole nearby? That's what you're jumping into. It's the next waypoint. We got a week to get it there, and it's only. Less than 500 light years. Yeah. Perfect. I'm probably going to be working all week anyway. 492.88 light years. Not bad. You can get here easily in less than, what, an hour or so? There is a neutron, a couple of neutrons along the way, by the way. You charge up where you're at. That's your first jump, and then there's another one along the way if you uh, hit your neutron cone uh, in your boot, which I did. And it, it turned out to be like four jumps, or five jumps, or something ridiculous. Like that, boom, 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 I'm already here. Hmm. That's funny. Huh. I might head by and just need to check something. So come visit me. I'm waiting for you guys. I might be there in a sec. I'm. I said I might, too. Just uh, click on the Neutron Cone Boost in your uh, navigation tab, and you'll be all set. Alright, Fuel Scoop and FSD online, ready to go. It's just where we headed. It's up in, uh, it's pinned in the next waypoint, uh, tab, Discord. from the first jump still works. Oh, I just sent another one of my pyramid limit. Okay. Yeah. No worries. 
True, I just hate prospecting. Heat sink only yield, that's a different story entirely. You gotta spare that. Really? Hard trees to find. I forget what takes. Well, I've only used one heat sink just because I jumped through a star when I was fucking getting here and stuff. <laughs> I made the mistake of spitting one out by hitting the damn button by mistake, and so I re uh, map that button. Get it up and out of the way. Oh, that pisses me off. That would have pissed me off too. Apparently, you can get premium heat dissipation. What does that even matter? 30% heat. Okay, yeah, heat conduction wiring and basic conductors. I only have, I only have two of those. Shit. One reload. Only one reload. Nine basic, nine standard, and nine premium. So yeah, I, I loaded up before uh, going on this trip specifically. Which system are we jumping to? 2.4 light years? That's the one I'm looking at. Jangada, I'm Six coming dash four zero zero three. Yeah. yeah, same one as before. Yeah. Dash zero zero three. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the same as before, yeah. Zero zero three. My All right. Destination. In position. Except for I had a neutron boost already charged up and ready to go, so I had to spend that. I didn't exactly jump with the crew, like I jumped like way ahead of them. Repair limit. Out of Oh, out of ammo. Okay shit. Whatever. I'm at ninety nine percent. I'm good. Synth, you get you get full right away. Yeah, but like now I have a good jump range. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, like a perfectly uniform shot of a bunch of ships waiting to go next thing. Oof. Oh shit, I just jumped. <laughs> that was a complete accident. Yep. It's on camera anyway. <laughs> Fuck. Oh well. That I'm is uh, <laughs> one thirtieth of the mass jumped on. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Reverse back into the main group. I thought my landing gear was still up and I pressed the wrong button. My uh, the send button is the same as my boost button, de depending what I'm using. Who's giving the signal to go? I'll just watch you guys jump in. I'm gonna position myself. Should we go on 36? 2036? Yep, which gotcha. is 10 seconds from now. Nine. Stick your head between your knees and kiss your arse goodbye. Six, <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. Ready. Ludicrous speed. Mr. Sulu, take us out. Right, I don't think I have to feel to get to somewhere else if this isn't a scoopable star. It's a scoopable star. Oh, thank God. It's an even loss. Jumps to the next waypoint. <laughs> the mound. The mound. Eon Green! TO dash Q. <laughs> Pretty much. Ten jumps. E5 dash 3167. Let's see how many jumps it is for me. 
Just click on me in the gal map. Simple. Oh, there you are. Five jumps. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I've got ten jumps, but that's because I'm not taking any risky stars. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm taking neutrons. I've only realized I've only got one gigabyte left of uh, space to record stuff, so I've got to get a new hard drive soon. Oh shit. Allons-y! Ah, tu peux pas aller défoncer? Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> You, you speak uh, French, uh, French or Quebec? French, Quebec, okay, Belgium, Joal. Ah, okay. Joal. Unfortunately, I'm I'm one of those people you call a French Canadian, so. Uh, no, because basically.